look up, look up, yeah. We have Pastor Steve Chicolanti. You're the pastor of Discover Church. They say it's the largest online church in Australia. Mondo, have you heard this? I've heard yes. This. Over 300,000 subscribers. What does that mean? Uh, that just means the, the Lord uses um, unlikely people to serve him. I don't know how it happened, but we, we have over 300,000 people that subscribe to us. We have over 50 million uh, views on YouTube, and we're just preaching the word. You know, we just want people to love Jesus and know Jesus because he's the answer to every problem. Yes, Pastor, yeah. you've written a lot of books. Do you want to name a few of your books that you wrote? because I don't, I haven't memorized. Sure, well, the first one was From Buddha to Jesus. That was part of my journey. I'm, I'm born in the largest practicing Buddhist country in the world, Thailand. It remains uh, one of the least evangelized countries in the world. Thailand and Japan are, the, are probably the two least evangelized, and they both have a Buddhist background. So I start off with From Buddha to Jesus, and then the Lord had me write the Divine Code, which uh, was quite popular. It's a, like an encyclopedia of the meaning of numbers, prophetic meaning. And then uh, we did Trump's Unfinished Business. It was really uh, important in the last election. And the Lord, you know, just told me that Trump would win uh, before 2016. And uh, we put our, you know, we put that word out and a lot of people watched it. In fact, we were getting millions of views and, and YouTube didn't take notice of us until Trump won. And then all the censors came and you know, you don't see it until you're one of the creators and you realize they really control the narrative. They, they do not want you to hear certain things, particularly biblical truths. Boy, that is for sure. I watched your video, three of your videos last night before I uh, yes. went to sleep. Yes. Which I didn't go to sleep after I watched your three videos. Yeah. <laughs> you, it Quite kept me up all night. Yeah. And if I've ever asked my viewers to see something, yeah. to watch something, right. I want you to get these. Yeah. This is like, I was going to say the Holy Grail. That doesn't sound <laughs> right. Yeah, but, but this is so powerful. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Overwhelms me. Yeah. Your message so clear. Lori, I'm going to ask you, can I interview you for a minute? Sure. What did you think of the videos that you watched? You watched them with me. I did. What, what was your first impression after watching them? As we were watching it, we didn't even say a word to each other. We just listened to every word. My first thought was, yes, this is absolutely true. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here comes, you know, pardon me, Pastor Steve, but to me, you know, you look like a very young man. How do you know this? <laughs> because you sound just like my husband. For the past 24 years, I've been listening to Jim say these things. And yet, it's like nobody really wanted to hear. People, they had made fun of us for many, many years um, for, for, you know, for 30 years shelf life food, yeah. um, all that kind of stuff. But what, what I was so amazed about was how clear, how clear. Oh, yes. You kept saying that. I just, all you I said this say is the clearest it's the voice I've clearest ever heard. clearest voice, uh, and especially when he went in, when Pastor Steve goes into the black and green horses of the apocalypse, coming engineered global famine. And all I did was go, Jim, this is exactly what's been going on. It's all engineered. It's all planned. They may take us off the air for this. I don't know. We're praying that God will protect us. We pray that you'll support this ministry, people. But I will tell you this. If we don't tell the truth, you've been trying to warn the church for 20-something oh. years. This video, this video. That's all I know. 
is succinct. It's the greatest piece of video I've ever seen about the last days. Yes. I want you to to watch it. Yeah. And we've just made arrangements the last few mm -hmm. mil, few minutes, really. And, uh, I mean, we're talking across the world yeah. with Steve and, and making arrangements with his people and all for this. So we're, we're offering the video yeah. of Pat. the black and green horse of the apocalypse yeah. coming engineered global famine. Yeah. That's show one or video one. Video two, the end of Australia, mm -hmm. the secret globalist plan revealed. Then message three, doomsday prepping the biblical way. Now, Steve, you have a, a mighty congregation, probably worldwide, millions of people watching you, and I want your voice to be hear, heard to the world. My, my goal, what God called me to do, was to build a network for the prophets. I believe you are a prophet. I don't know if you've ever been called that or not, but I, I, forgive me if I'm offending you, but I believe you're a prophet. I've never heard any more clear word of prophecy. It makes me want to get ready more. Yes. I want to tell you something. Your church, tell me about what you're building, the, the center you're building, the new studio that you're building. What do you call that? So we're calling that our Goshen, and we're not the only Goshen. You know, the Goshen was the place where the Jews were outcasts, and, you know, they couldn't live with the Egyptians. But it turned out to be a place of refuge because when the ten plagues came, and that's the template of redemption is you start off with a plague. That's why we we're starting off with covid when the ten plagues came, the Bible says five times, not in Goshen, not in Goshen. So uh, when the lockdowns came the first time, uh, we in Australia, the churches were locked down for two solid years, especially in Victoria, where we have the worst lockdown. Uh, Melbourne was considered for many years by The Economist the most livable city in the world, and we quickly became the most lockdown city in the world. Oh. So what we learn, and, and God prepared us two years ahead of time before it happened, he says, get online, build an infrastructure online. I even tried to tell other local pastors, and they considered it, you know, almost like a distraction, like, you know, why are you playing with social media? That's not the real uh, ministry, not, not where you can really reach people. But we went online two years ahead of COVID, and we realized because of the lockdown, uh, in Australia, we could not gather with non-household family members. Oh. So what we're trying to do with building this Goshen is a, is a self-sustainable place where the ministry will continue no matter what lockdowns come, and they're coming again. I really believe right after November, we've got an election here. You've got an election there. Uh, if things you know, don't change in terms of who gets the power, then uh, new lockdowns will come in. So... Uh, we, we are preparing Goshen here, but we also are working with people like in Thailand and in America and other places where, you know, everybody needs a Goshen. And I should really um, thank you, you know, Jim, you've actually led the way long before others. And you mentioned these things like, you know, everything we do now is preparation. Everything we do, you know, we're the five virgins that have woken up and we're just preparing. And when I prepare, I think of Jim Baker. I think how slow is the rest of us because Jim Baker has been ahead of us all this time, but you're vindicated. You're absolutely vindicated. Um, the Bible predicts a famine. Um, it doesn't mean that we must go through the tribulation. You know, everybody has their own view about the rapture. We're not arguing about the view of the rapture. We're saying that is part of the World Economic Forum agenda. That's part of the globalist agenda. And we're, we're living right in the midst of it. Absolutely. I have, I have prophets on the show with me, Steve, that have been here the last few weeks that believe the tribulation could begin the end of this year. Is that right, Mondo? Correct. Have you ever, have you heard that at all? I have heard that, and I, I don't want to, you know, sound the trumpet yet. I think I need a bit more 
I, did, I need a bit more uh, confirmation because that's a very big thing. If we're saying within yeah. a month, basically, uh, tribulation starts, that, that's a very big thing. I, I think that there is time for people to prepare. I think the warning is being given for people to prepare. I'm not going to have enough time in today's show to do this justice. I want you to order the tape, the video. Mm -hmm. It's not tape, it's, it's three video. Le it's three lessons, as you would call them. It's three teachings yeah. and one DVD. You can receive one for $20. But if I was you, I would go with what I love is the three, the friends and family offer. Oh. And oh. that one is for $50, you receive three of these videos. And, and you want everybody, you, you want your to children to have it. You want your kids. You want, want your parents. I want, you want my pastor love. to have one. He's yes. sitting right there. You get the first one. <laughs> They'll be running off the machines in a few days. So I want you to have one, Pastor. This is the most potent piece of information I have ever heard. I want this man, for right Steve, now, for these I want, him on, the, I want right. him on our network. Right. I want him because I want the gospel to be preached to all the world. Amen. Yes. And the witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Did you know that? Amen. But, Steve, you are building a studio for the last days. Is that right? Tell, say, say something about that. So we've actually acquired a, a castle. It's our church castle, and it's going to have a studio. It's going to have the ability to house, you know, several staff so that if we go into lockdown, we continue to be in the same household and continue to record. I mean, it's unimaginable that we're talking this way about where ministry is going, but we're not talking about big buildings and, and big auditoriums anymore. We have to face the reality that persecution will come. And we have crosshairs on you know, our back or our, our forehead. So it's a self-sustainable place. We, we're getting the solar panels. We're getting the you know, uh, water catchment, um, energy efficient heater, all, you know, everything. And, and, and the gardening, and we're teaching our church, you know, learn how to garden. You know, God put Adam and Eve in the garden. Amen. Even if the famine doesn't come right now, you're gonna be so much healthier to just get off of, you know, social media and get back under the sun and breathe fresh air and, and just reconnect, you know, again with God's creation. So that's a place where we're going to be able to self-sustain. So we have a, a budget for a million dollars for that. Steve, do you, people think you're crazy? Well, I guess they thought I was crazy when I first said that we're going to need online church. I mean, it wasn't even a concept. If you think about it, two years ago, it wasn't a concept. But you're ahead it of it. It was almost blasphemy. You're ahead of it. To say that people you're, gather online. Yeah, all of this that you're doing is what, uh, you know, I started Christian Television with Pat Robertson 60-some uh, years ago, and, it, and, it, and, it, and I can't believe because I'm having a hard time doing what you're doing because you are on a cutting edge. But God spoke to me in prison that television as we knew it at my time in prison would be not, would, be, not would disappear prison. someday. Yeah. It's going to be a whole new technique. You understand, mm -hmm. Monday? Yeah, yeah. And we're watching the numbers of regular television dropping every year 10%. We're watching, you know, the church move into an online presence yet that's where 90% of the population live is on the presence of social media. It's what they call the social media public square. If you don't exist in the public square, then you don't exist at all. So the church has to maintain its presence but in the public square. Steve, you, you literally were ahead of your time and, and were ahead of the, the, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Yeah, COVID-19. COVID-19. And I'm shocked. Forgive me, because I, 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 I really haven't met you before, Steve. I have, uh, the first time I heard you preach was last night in my bedroom with my wife and I watching three of these powerful messages that we're sending out to the people today because I was so overwhelmed, I couldn't sleep. God said, you've got to get these to the people. So and, one for $20 and, or three, better yet, friends and family, give them out to people, get as many as you possibly can get and, and get them to everyone you love, everybody you know. So Steve, you reported and warned about the food shortage uh, in Australia. 
How is that a foreshadow of what is coming to America? Well, uh, Australia is the test case. You know, it, it's the lab rat of the world. And there's no doubt uh, that what's happening here, it's going to spread to the Western world. We're already seeing it um, engineered in Ghana. Uh, Ghana, you know, was a pretty self-sufficient country, was oil producing. Then the World Bank came in in 2015 and said that uh, they made the biggest guarantee for uh, Ghana to transition to green energy. And now in 2022, Ghana has rolling blackouts. And guess what they found out? If you have blackouts, the water doesn't pump. Then, you, then you're thirsty, the plants are not getting irrigation, then you have famine, then you have riots. So they engineered that in Ghana. People hardly know about that. They engineered that in Sri Lanka, which is more my neighborhood, especially in Thailand. You know, Thailand's very interested in what's going on in, in Sri Lanka. And yeah, it, it starts off with, you know, again, the black horse. The black is the oil. All these symbolisms in the book of Revelation are, are open up. They're very easy to understand now. It's, it's so obvious. It strikes, you know, hits you in the head and you think, why didn't I see it before? But that's the nature of prophecy. God has concealed it so that nobody can claim credit or say they doctored it. It was stated before the fact. So the black horse leads the famine and the famine comes through the oil being, uh, you know, oil prices being so high. Uh, we're now dependent on dis a distribution system, transportation system. We used to grow our own food, you know, garden to, to plate or farm to mouth uh, no longer exists. So that's, uh, that's taken down Sri Lanka. They had oil um, shortage, then they had water shortage, food shortage, and then riot. Now we're hearing it uh, on the news. I hope Americans are paying attention. It's coming to the Western world, the Netherlands. The Netherlands are trying to pass not only, you know, carbon, they made carbon the enemy, and th and that wasn't enough. Didn't produce enough scare. Not enough people, you know, stop driving cars and flying planes. So now the next scare is they want to go nitrogen neutral, not just carbon neutral, nitrogen neutral. And this is killing the farmers in the Netherlands. So there are protests going on that you you hardly see reported, um, but I'm paying attention to it because that's part of my calling. And I see the book of Revelation playing out. We're in, you know, people always want to know, where are we in the timeline? We're in Revelation chapter 6. And we're blinded to it because we were taught for so long by wonderful, uh, you know, forefathers in, in the faith who didn't have the light that we're in now. And they just assume that Revelation 6 has to be the tribulation. And this is part of what I'm trying to correct with the timeline. It's just a minor correction. There are lots of scriptures that I explain in a, in a teaching called the 22 future events of Revelation. And I explain that if you just move Revelation 6 out of your assumption that it's tribulation and move it into the pre-tribulation, everything fits with Matthew 24, Luke 21, it all fits. And we're living in pre-tribulation. We're living in pre-tribulation signs right now. So Revelation uh, well, I can't say, you know, I can't say the white horse uh, on YouTube or on, I don't know, on TV, you'll get in trouble. But it's pretty clear who the white horse is to me. Uh, then the red horse, red is communism. You know, all this globalist, Marxist, uh, liberal uh, ideology, it, it's defined by red. And red also could mean war. And then you got black, which is, you know, uh, the price of oil really controls the price of everything. If you inflate the price of oil, you're going to have inflation on food prices and everything else. So that's what we're living through right now. So, you know, we didn't know all that until recently. And yet in the spirit, we knew to prepare online church. You know, we, even if there's a lockdown, uh, we have an online church, discoverchurch.online that will keep going for as long as there's the internet and they won't keep, they won't take that down right away. And you've been preparing, telling people to get, you know, stock up on food and things like that. And I've learned, you know, through, uh, I'm not an agricultural person, but the Lord's told me, get ready. You know, you're going to need some essentials. You need food, you need water, you need energy, you need tools, you need weapons, and you need other people. These are just like essential things that any Goshen would need. So we're beginning to pre prepare that. And we realize even if you got all the dry food in the world, I mean, how much can you store? They can last 25, 30 years. You still are going to have to take some responsibility and start learning how to garden, how to yes. make fertilizer, how to grow plants, uh, how to keep the pests away. Amen. We have to go back to everything now and get back to the basics, all the basic skills that Christians have lost. 
Because here's the problem. God says that in the end time, you can't serve God and mammon. Now, people are serving mammon. So what does the Antichrist have to do? Take the money to become digital. Once it's digital, they can survey you and they can actually switch off your money. And if you don't have money in the end time, most people without any other skills would die. You would die. You'd have no money. You have you know, no way to get food. We've got to wean ourselves off the B system. And we know that the digital currency is coming. Australia is, again, leading the way. We're, we're unabashedly telling our people that we are in beta phase. We are testing out digital currency for Australia. You know, the Chinese do that because it's, it's a way of uh, monitoring people, assigning social credit to them. These are not things that you want in America. But I don't know how long we can last uh, before all this happens. You, you just see how much damage has happened to America after one year of this, of this uh, man in the White House. And there's three more years of this. So how far, how far are they going to go? That's right. It's later than we think. And I know that's an old saying, but it is much, much later than you think. And w a few days ago, the FBI raided the home of a former president. This has never been done before. Never in American history. And, and, never. And, and they have vowed. There's people that are vowing to do everything possible to keep Trump from ever, ever being in the White House again. The, 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 the anger is grow, growing. And the, the famine is coming. We're hearing about it all over the world. Mondo, you were just in Europe, and the, the, the water problem there is very serious. I woke up to this headline. Italy has declared a state of emergency because of drought. Mm. Welcome to Rome, right? Mm. To yeah. wake up in a country that you think everything is okay, drought is, is really determining wow. the outcome of Italy as a whole. You talk about water being poisoned. You talk about food being you know, shortage of food. Everything begins with water. Yeah. Steve, I wish I had about a month to interview you because <laughs> I've got so much to talk about. And you believe an engineered famine is coming. Why don't Christians think about preparing spiritually and physically? Well, because Christians are, are living by sight and not by prophecy. And we've done a very poor job of teaching prophecy to the church. So people are just looking at, you know, what they see and they see that there's still food. So they don't realize when change happens, it happens suddenly. You know, things can turn very, very quickly. And that's what the Bible shows. You know, when these plagues come, famines come, sieges come, uh, they come unexpectedly and unimaginable things happen. You know, the Bible talks about a mother, two mothers, um, one who said, you know, well, we have no more food left, so let's eat your son. And the other mother says, okay, we'll eat our son today as long as we can eat your son tomorrow. And, of course, the lady didn't keep her word. And the king he hears this and just tears his clothes and says, what, what has Jerusalem, the city of God, come to? These stories are in the Bible to waken us up. I mean, unimaginable things that has never been seen in the world before are going to come. That's not trying to create anxiety and panic. You know, God knows we have enough uh, stress, right, in, in people's lives. But if we're prepared, if we're ready, then we're not going to be the, you know, the low-hanging fruits that, that the government will come after, the devil will come after, and we'll be able to continue to minister and preach the gospel like you've prepared and we are here in Australia preparing. We want to get the gospel out into all the world as a witness to all nations. And we can't be asleep. I mean, the metaphor in the Bible from Matthew 25 from the Lord Jesus is that the entire church is asleep and five, half of them wake up. And I think that's what we're talking to today is we're talking to people who are waking up. And America is way too comfortable. I mean, if there's one thing that my message is for America is you're, you're so rich, so comfortable and doing so little for the Lord. Every American Christian ought to be out on the mission field. I should not be out here in, in Thailand, in the, one of the least evangelized countries on earth. 500 years of evangelism in this country has produced less than 1% Christian. And uh, we need more people. We need all the wonderfully taught, 
rich Christians and every, everybody in America is rich compared to the rest of the world. You ought to get out into missions. And I'm calling the American church to wake up and do the work of the gospel again, do the work of missions again, and God will spare the nation. Wow. If we go back to the mandate why America was founded, it was supposed to be a bastion for re religious freedom, That's right. not a place that persecutes the Bible and kills babies through abortion and shuts down churches during Easter. This is not what America was intended to be. So we need to wake up. We need to wake up, church. Oh, it's so powerful. Wow, I am so overwhelmed with his message. He's, he's the quietest preacher, but he's just powerful. His words are power. And because he's, well, it's truth telling, because he is, is, is exactly, he's, he, uh, Teaching but you, Pastor if, if Steve, I don't ever, Revelation, tw Matthew 24, Matthew 25, Luke 21. Does that sound familiar to you, the people that watch this show on a, a regular basis? Yes, it should sound familiar. And yes, there is persecution, but we have to wake up. I thank you for saying this to America, Pastor Steve, that we are way too comfortable. We are. Well, you're... You live in Australia. Do you do you keep your eye on America at all? I mean, it's that's a long ways away from here, but you seem to know an awful lot. I, in your sermons, I you preach about things in America. You're preaching to America in your sermons as well as preaching to Australia. Yes. So, what what do you feel about, for instance, the raid on Trump's home? That was such a shock to me. Yes. Mondo was overseas when it happened, and usually I call him immediately, and so uh, I just talked to Lori about it <laughs> at, at my house. But it, it was so overwhelming. I know it's, mm -hmm. it's one of the most important milestones, and I'm not sure what's all coming out of it, but I know it's one of the big points of what's coming in the future, and, and this, this turmoil... That's hatred for Trump. This hatred for Trump is supernatural. Yeah. It's an evil, evil thing that's happening. What do you think? Well, believe it or not, I made several predictions in, I consider my most important message to America is the book, Trump's Unfinished Business. And I didn't realize how prophetic it would be that he would literally not finish it in his, you know, not get a second term consecutively. But I made several predictions. I said, number one, that he's there as an agent of justice to put in pro-life justices who will overturn Roe v. Wade. So that book was, was published before, long before it happened. Another thing I said is Trump's troubles always come around the issue of justice, and all his successes will come around the issue of justice. And so the Democrats will use lawfare to uh, harass him, intimidate him, defeat him, and that's exactly what the Trump raid is, right? It's the misuse the overbearing use of the law to harass a political opponent. And this breaks the Ninth Commandment. So in my book, I lay out something very simple. It's so simple, you just think, how could it be that easy? But all the solutions to America is in something that we've ignored, and we even say, well, it doesn't apply to us anymore. It's actually in the Ten Commandments. And what they did uh, through the Russia hoax and their uh, you know, hoax impeachment and now the Trump raid is they're breaking the ninth commandment. They're bearing false witness. They're calling him guilty and he has to you know, be guilty be until he's proven innocent. So this breaks the ninth commandment. God's very clear. Defamation, false accusa accusation. This is what the devil does. His name is the accuser of the brethren. And we're to overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony and to not love our lives to the death. But I think this has happened so that, you know, from Trump's side, he really needs to, this has to become personal. This issue of justice, he did not fully accomplish. And there are uh, 10 prophecies, 10 things that he or another Trump or somebody else is, is going to be use of God to be an agent of justice. So they come at him with lawfare. He should have come at them with biblical justice. Um, he, he did that at least with the pro-life justices. He did a great job. It's going to be a great legacy. And it's amazing it happened even after, uh, after he was gone. But he needs to, to get, he needs to become disciple. He 
he, if he's a born again Christian, which so many pastors say he is, he needs to be discipled. He's obviously not being discipled in what his role is in in getting this power. It's not to show off. It's not to to be you know uh, the like a host of the Apprentice. He is to be an agent of justice. Now, my feeling about the Trump raid, and this is just from my spirit, I think that actually we conservatives are often on the back foot. You know, we are conservatives, right? We're Christian first, but if we're politically conservative, we're often on the back foot, and we don't realize what, what the devil is doing. I think possibly what's really happening is not they're fishing for things that they know he hasn't done. Obviously, he's not a spy for the Russians. He's not collecting uh, nuclear co secret codes to pass on to his neighbor. Th these are farcical, right? But I think that it's quite possible that they did the raid because they wanted to destroy his evidence on the Clintons, the Obamas, um, maybe the Bidens, Hunter, all of this stuff. So I, I see this because you look at what happens, how, how evil operates. Evil is always destroying evidence. So you look at the Temple Mount. Why is it that the Palestinians want to control the Temple Mount? It's because they want to prove that there was never any Israeli kings there. They regularly destroy um, archaeological evidence, right? Because if King David was there, King Solomon was there, the Temple Mount really was used, then it disproves their whole you know, their whole religion that, you know, Islam was first and Islam was the only religion in Israel. And you see, they also try to destroy uh, Israel itself. You know, many radical Muslim terrorist groups and countries want to destroy Israel. Why? Because Israel is the evidence, right, that Jehovah God, Yahweh, Elohim is greater than Allah, right? That's the proof. God has kept this tiny little nation in victory, the whole time, and has even resurrected it back in 1948. So they're trying to destroy. The devil is into destroying evidence. So when I see this raid, we don't get enough information. It's a little bit confusing why they would do something so heavy-handed. It's changed the, the face of U.S. government and politics. Um, why would they do that? I think there must be some scare, and it, quite possibly they're trying to destroy some evidence. That's my, that's my feeling about it. And... You know, people, people, we just have to wait. We have to wait and see um, what the news is going to reveal. I appreciate you giving us your thoughts on it. It's very important. Mm -hmm. I know this, and God's people need to be alert yes. to what's happening. Right. Earlier this year, and I'm running out of time today, but earlier this year you preached a message on uh, 2 Kings 6, 24 and 30, which deals with uh, some sudden famine. Why should people pay attention to this scripture portion? Well, exactly, because it, it's going to happen suddenly. We're not going to get a lot of warning. I mean, I think if you're listening to the, you know, Jim Baker show and listening to, to ministries like mine on YouTube and, you know, you're going to hear it more, but the world is not hearing it. It happens suddenly and it's unimaginable. You know, so it, it, we, I read it to you that, when the siege happened by Ben-Hadad, the king of Aram, that, you know, the, the mothers were eating their own children. We, we, we cannot even imagine that. We don't want to imagine that. But we've, we've got to take the Bible seriously. And I think this has been the problem why America has become lukewarm, is we're no longer, I don't think the typical American churchgoer goes to church with a deep hunger for the Word of God. You know, you, you are a Christian nation, and you have a duty to go to church, and you know that you do, and so a lot of people just show up on Sunday. But from being in America, and the Lord said, I'm, He's going to send me to all 50 states, I'm going to preach in, in all 50 states, that's, that's already started, but I don't feel that people are desperate for the Word of God, and they're hungry, and, and really, they're not there to apply the Word of God, and they're not there, the sermons are too short, I know this is a shock for Americans, you know, your 20-minute sermons are too short. Having an hour of Jim Baker is too short. You need more of the Word of God. You need to be so hungry and thirsty for the Word of God. And if you are, then prophecy will click. Your eyes will be open. 
This is not something for the casual observer. God says his word is you're supposed to dig into it like you're looking for gold, right? We're supposed to ask for our daily bread. And I think that that's what's missing now. Americans, we just go back to the word of God and you will see clearly the warnings and you see clearly the Bible is 100% true. God's trying to prepare all of us. First preparation is to know Jesus. There's no point to have all this wealth and go to church and, and not be born again. You have to be a born again Christian. You have to be an authentic Bible believing Christian. That's number one, that's preparation, right? Uh, then after that, the Lord will guide your life. The, Jesus says in John chapter 12, he says that if anyone would serve me, him will my father honor. That's the next step, serve him, get close to him, find out what the will of God. It's not just gonna come to you passively. You have to search for him, you have to seek him, you have to call out to him and he will use your life. Amen. Wow. He wow. will. He'll take you I, up on it. I, you are the most soft-spoken preacher, but yet I feel like you're, you unload dump trucks on me. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? I, he, he just, uh, uh, it's it, a lo the word is yeah, yeah. coming on me. Yeah. Well, it's so true. powerful well, it's that I can hardly handle well, it. Well, it's, yeah. it's because it's truth, and we all need to listen to it. Uh, and I, I was watching one of your sermons. You were talking about the power of the, the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. and how important that, that God doesn't change his no, laws right. all the time. That. He I isn't trying that. to yeah. trick us or anything like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. When you that's hear right. this man true. talk about in soft-spoken words, I mean, if you just take a moment and read 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24, mm -hmm. that'll wake you up. But when you look at the headlines and you look at what Pastor Steve just finished talking about, mm -hmm. we are there. Yeah. It is knocking at our doors, and we don't want to wake up until we realize there is no more food. A lot of the food bam what do you call them? Food, the food banks. Banks are not able to deliver food now. No. They used to be able to get free food. You Remember we used to, mm -hmm. we get food that the, the, the yes. grocery stores had extra food mm -hmm. that they, they yes. did send yes. it out. There's not extra but, food but anymore. But it's not today. happening. No. It's really very serious. And yeah. I'm hoping that you will be prepared. I'm yeah. hoping that you will have even put seeds away and get ready to farm. We've got your... Uh, also, we have your mother-in-law and father-in-law yeah. are farmers. That's right. And uh, I'm hoping they'll do more with us. I I wanted to, I I bought land around here, and I want I want us to farm. I want us to learn to farm, because kids, it doesn't come from the grocery store. That's Food right. comes from the ground. It comes from the farm. And Pastor and, Steve talks about this type of thing in these DVDs. So you're going to want to get at least one set of this DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, Marisela, also real quick. Um, we also have the food buckets still available, yes. right? Is That's that right. right? Yes, we have our prepared pantry. 30-year 30, 30 shelf life food is now available again. This is the prepared pantry, 60 mil food supply. Okay. And if people are going to order food, you've got to do it now. We are only able to have them build for us, prepare for us, a thousand buckets a month. Every month, yeah. Every month they get a... So you need to order your buckets now because you're going to have to fight for what you want in the future. This is the most important piece of information that I've heard yeah. in my current life. If there was a guest that I or team work hard on getting was Pastor Steve for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's getting very, very rare. I'm hoping he can, he can fly in here sometime and spend a week with us and teach and just pack this place out with people learning Yes. And tape, as much tape as we can, to ship it out to the world, the video. Because he has a message that is very, very unique. He's one of the, and I don't know how to put people, you know. I would say he's one of the top three prophets in the day to day. Mm -hmm. So I want to watch a piece from one of your recent services about food shortage. And then we're going to talk about it. So, so let's roll this piece from his church. The pain at the pump is being felt everywhere. And once you have pain at the pump, you will have high food prices because food needs to be transported. Why does food need to be transported? Because you don't know how to grow food. The solution is actually quite simple. You can learn to grow food in such a way 
that you never need to buy anymore. But they created a distribution system that they control, and that makes you slaves. So people, people have become slaves to money and then slaves to the distribution system. So if they can cut off money, most people will starve to death. And most people have no access to the distribution. But what if we all grew our own food? And what if we all shared our own food in our own community? This is why we have church. Then we don't need to depend on that. That's right. Mm. <laughs> that's, why, that's excellent. You know, some of the people here uh, over the years have grown gardens. And mm -hmm. I think, Pastor, yeah, we're going to have to start happen. getting the, the, the people that live here to have their their land, the little piece of land we had before, remember? And you can start yeah. growing your own food. That's right. We have a garden. Yes. Right? Yes. Can we do right. that? Now? Yeah, we have a garden where we allow Janet and Dane manage it yeah. by the barn, and they allow people to come and so, have their little plots for their but, gardens. And so share. Steve's That's talking right. about, and Steve's going to be back tomorrow, God willing. And uh, I'm, 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 I've interviewed Billy Graham. I've interviewed Ronald Reagan. I've interviewed them all. But I am shaking interviewing this man. Because he has, he has a message that is so, you know, I used to talk about preaching uh, laser. laser. Laser His prayer. preaching is, yeah, but he is preaching laser. Yes. Yeah. About what's going on right now in this world. Yeah. And uh, I understand, Steve, that, forgive me for my frustration, but I, I I'm, you know, I'm the, like the guy that got on his horse and rode off in all directions at the same time. <laughs> I'm, I, you, you, you put a, a smorgasbord out on a table, and I'm like a starving man. I want to, I want to grab it all. But will the government in Australia actually outlaw people from growing their own food? You, you have mentioned something about that. Yeah, we talked about that, and actually the videos were done before the law was passed. The law has already been passed that's attacking this, and let me read it to you. It's called the Agricultural Legislation Amendment Bill. We're in the most tyrannical uh, government in Australia. Uh, it's called the state of Victoria. It's run by a labor uh, man named Dan Andrews. And, I mean, look, look at what they're saying, okay, because there's a lot of conjecture about this, like, they don't want you to grow your own food if you hunt for animals um, and you have to be licensed. You can't share the meat. But here, here's stuff that's being passed under the guise of COVID, right? It's got nothing to do with COVID. Um, one section says, a new Section 54 gives authorized officers the specific power to enter and inspect at a reasonable time anything found at any place other than a place occupied as a residence. The authorized officer must exercise uh, the power of entry if they reasonably suspect it is necessary to inspect any of the following. Any fertilizer, stock food, chemical product. Uh, th this is so broad. You're basically allowing uh, any official, and they don't have to produce their ID anymore, okay? Any government official, not a police, to search your farm without a warrant. Now, why is this being passed now? And just like in America, they're pushing, you know, the, the Green New Deal bills, the climate change bills. Here in Australia, they're doing the same. But here, we have a different kind of population, a different kind of nation. It goes through much quicker. So we're the test case, right? We're, we're the trial. So if you see it happening in Australia, you know that's the agenda that's coming to America, Canada, New Zealand, and the rest. So uh, it, it's already happening. You know, last week, um, our church members found about a third of uh, all vegetables were gone off the grocery shelves. And, and we started off with, during COVID, there was a run on toilet paper. I don't know what it is with we Aussies, but we, everybody hoards toilet paper and tissue. But then we, we didn't have enough lettuce and people kind of made do with that. And they said they changed the, you know, KFC formula to, and Subway also had to substitute uh, lettuce for cabbages. And people made do with that. Then the strawberries disappeared. And then more and more vegetables disappeared. And then at the same time, rather than releasing more uh, food, making it easier for farmers to do their job, they make it harder. They tighten up the regulation and they say, you can be searched without a warrant. So I said that before it happened, it's already happened. I wanna say something else that I think is gonna happen. I predict that 
uh, the police, possibly the military security companies, are going to be coming out to not help us, not protect the citizen. They're going to be coming out to guard food in not too long. So food is going to be a major issue. And I, I wish for Christians who want to survive and continue to minister, you got to have you got to have food. You got to have food, water, energy, all these basic things. This, this is you know sensible prepping. This is not crazy. This is sensible, and it, we're already seeing it in Australia. All right. So please tomorrow, be aware of this and take action. Tomorrow, I want to begin where we ended right here because it's unbelievable. Yeah. We have a, a bureau about our food that I want to run. But tomorrow, I'm going to have Steve talk about the fact that your government's supposedly next month going to outlaw milk and cheese and other dairy products. Why is the government saying this? Uh, you can answer that tomorrow. This is the most powerful video I think you'll ever hear. And Steve has got three great messages on here. The black and green horse of the apocalypse coming engineered global famine, the end of Australia, the secret globalist plan revealed, and then doomsday prepping the biblical way. Three great messages from this. He's a last day prophet for this hour. He is totally, even that as a plan to keep the church going Amen. in these last days, what God has given to me. And we got to, we got to, shovel some coal in the fire and get this thing going again yeah. like it should and I, I i just i just wish i had more time today but steve will be back with us on tomorrow god willing remember that god loves you if you don't know jesus ask him into your heart remember god loves you he really does bye 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 we love you thank you pastor steve